Hello and welcome to this Swift UI tutorial. I'm Cal and today we're going to be building a calendar view. This is actually the second calendar view tutorial I've done in Swift and Xcode. The first one we built using Storyboard. Today we're going to be building it in Swift UI. The layout and look and feel is much of the same. You know, you've got your monthly view which you can scroll left and right and it's going to change the month. So without further ado, let's get started. Cool, so starting off with a brand new Swift UI project. I'm gonna call this Calendar Swift UI and just hit finish and create. I'm not particularly big on the assistant editor. Maybe I'll change my mind in the future, but I'm just gonna hide it for now. And then I'm gonna hit Command N to create a new Swift file and I'm just gonna call this date holder. Right now, all we're gonna do is store our selected date, but in the future, if you needed to store other variables, like say, you know, whether you wanna show the Monday or the Sunday first or a whole bunch of other stuff, it's just sort of easier to create an object rather than just having the one variable. So I'm just gonna create a class calling it date holder, which is an observable object. And we're just gonna introduce a published variable date, which we're just gonna initialize to today's date. And now we're gonna head back into our content view and we're gonna declare this date holder date, declaring an environment object of our date holder, which is of our new date holder class. And I'm gonna create a new Swift UI file. I'm gonna name this to date scroller view. So we're gonna create basically just the month view at the top where you can have the buttons going left or right. And we're going to copy and paste in our environment object into our date scroller view. We're going to add into the body of our content view. We're gonna create our date scroller view and we can pass through our environment object, our date holder. And we also need to do that for our content view. So we're gonna head into our app and we're actually going to declare the date holder. So this is at the, the root point. We're going to set our date to today's date and then we're gonna pass that into our content view, which is then gonna in turn pass it through to our date scroller view. So what we're gonna do now is set up our date scroller. So I'm just gonna add in a H stack and inside that we're gonna put in two spaces. In between the two spaces, we're gonna have a button and our action is going to be previous month. So this is just gonna be the going left button. We're just gonna create a function for the action. So just calling that previous month. And I'm gonna copy and paste down that function, just calling it next month. And our button is gonna be an image and we're gonna give it our arrow left. Image scale, we're gonna say large. And the font, we're just gonna say font title, weight is bold. So just making it all kind of big. We're gonna paste down that button and just calling the action next month and changing the arrow to be a right. In between our two buttons, we wanna display the selected month and year. So we're gonna add in a text. To fill in the text, we're actually gonna create a new Swift file. I'm gonna call this calendar helper. What we're gonna do here is just declare our class calendar helper. And we're just gonna put in some functions that are related to a calendar. So I'm gonna declare a variable calling it calendar, which is equal to calendar current and we're gonna declare a date formatter. Our first function is gonna be month year string and it's gonna receive a date and it's gonna return a string. And so basically it's going to take the year and month out of a given date and display it in a string. With our date formatter, we're gonna give it a date format of months and years, and then we're gonna return a date formatter string from date. Cool, the other one we wanna do is plus month. So we wanna add a month to any given date. So we're gonna receive a date and return a date. We're gonna say calendar date by adding value. So our, by adding, we're gonna add month, value we're gonna have one, and two is our date that we've received. And that needs to be non-optional. So I'm just gonna force open that because the date should never be nil. And then we're gonna copy and paste that down and just change that to minus month. And instead of adding a month, we're gonna take away, so minus one. And then inside our date scroller view, we can say text is equal to our calendar helper month year from string, and we're gonna give it our date holder date and our text, we're just gonna make the font size a little bigger, so it's gonna be a font title as well as bold, and we're not gonna give it any animation when it changes. And we're also just gonna say the frame is going to be a max width of infinity, so take up all available space. And then we can fill in our previous and next month. We just wanna say date holder date is equal to our minus month function in our calendar helper, and we're obviously gonna do the same thing for our next month, but just adding a month. Cool, so let's build and run our date scroller and see if it's working. And you can see it's April now, so it's initialized to this month. And I can scroll forwards and backwards and the year and month should be changing. Um, so yeah, that's all looking pretty good. Next, what we're gonna do is just add in the Monday, Tuesday. We're gonna close off our date scroller view and head back into our content view. So I'm gonna add in a V stack with the spacing of one. And we're gonna create a variable calling it day of week stack. And it's gonna be of some view and we can put our day of week stack below our date scroller view. And our day of week stack is gonna be a H stack with spacing of one as well. And inside here, we're gonna just add in some text. So our text for the first one is gonna be Sunday and we're gonna 
add an extension to text. So this is to make it all just a little bit easier if you wanted to update the, the way that this looked in the future. We're gonna create a function uh, calling it day of week, which is of some view. And we're gonna say self frame max width of infinity. So take up all the available space. Padding top of one. We're gonna say line limit of one. And we're just gonna apply that now to our text. And now we can copy and paste that down seven times and just changing the text to the appropriate day of the week. And now if we build and run this, you can see we've got our Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. So the final thing left to do is to actually create the calendar. So we're gonna copy down our variable. We're gonna call this calendar grid. This is gonna be a V stack with some spacing of one. We're gonna put that in below our day of week stack and we're gonna remove all of our texts. So a calendar is just a seven by six grid. So we're gonna say for each of our zero is less than six. So go through uh, six times. We're gonna call this our row. And so for each of our rows, we're gonna add in a H stack with a spacing of one. And then for each of our rows, we're gonna go through, we're gonna start at one to less than eight. So go through seven times and call this column. And then we're gonna say count is equal to the column that we're up to plus row times seven. And so this number is gonna come in handy when trying to decide what day we should be displaying on our calendar grid. But we're gonna need some other variables to determine this. So we're gonna head back into our calendar helper and we're gonna create another function calling it days in month, which receives a date and returns an int. And so we're just gonna say let range equal to calendar range of day in month for the given date. So this is just gonna return the number of days uh, for any given month. So 31 for January, 28 for February, or if it's a leap year, 29. And then we're just gonna return range.count. We're gonna create another function calling it day of month. This function will return just the, the day of the month for any given date. So given say the 31st of April, it's going to just return 31. So to do this, we say components is equal to calendar date components day from our given date and then return components day. We're gonna create one more function while we're here, calling it first of month. Given the 22nd of January, it's gonna return the 1st of January. So to do that, we're just gonna say components is equal to date components. We just get the year and month from our date and then return calendar date from our date components. And so just returning a date and not an int. Cool, so now with our new calendar helper functions, we can head back into our calendar grid. We're just gonna declare our days in month given our date holder date and we're gonna create one more calling it first day of the month. Again, giving it our date holder date. We can say starting spaces. So how many spaces we wanna go before we start our month. We're gonna say date holder and we actually want one more function. So I'm just gonna copy paste this down, calling it weekday. And we're just going to get the weekday component out of our date. So whether it's a Sunday or a Monday, it's just gonna return a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're gonna say previous month is equal to our calendar helper. We're gonna minus a month from our date holder date. And then we're gonna get the days in the previous month. So whether there was 31 or 30 days in the month previous. And so I just need to put those variables inside our VStack for it to build. And then we're gonna create a new Swift UI component calling this calendar cell. And our calendar cell is going to receive all of these variables. So we're gonna receive our count which we deducted from our for each loops. We're gonna create, we're going to receive our starting spaces as well as the days in month, as well as the days in the previous month. And the preview just need to give this all some dummy data. So I'm just gonna put one for all of these. Cool, so now inside our for each loop, we're going to create a calendar cell and we're gonna pass through all of our different variables into the correct one. So count for count and so on and so forth. And then the final thing we wanna do is just pass through our date holder and just say the frame max height equal to infinity. So each cell takes up the same amount of space as every other cell. Cool, so first thing we're gonna do here is create a new Swift file. I'm gonna call this month struct and it's gonna just be a struct. Um, I'm just calling it month struct and it's gonna have a month type, which we're gonna declare an enum below. So the month type is gonna be either it's the previous month, it's the current month, or it's the future month. And if it's the current month, we're obviously gonna display the text in black. And if it's previous, it's gonna be gray. So we're just gonna create our three cases. So previous, current, and next. And our month type is of our month type enum. And we're gonna say our day int, which is of type int. And then we're also gonna create a function which just turns our day int into a string. So just return the string value of our day int. 
So now we can close that off and head into our calendar cell. We're going to create a month struct function, which just re returns our month struct. And we're going to say, let start equal to our starting spaces. If it's equal to zero, we're going to add seven. And this is for Sunday. Otherwise, just use your starting spaces. And if our count is less than or equal to our start, meaning that it's the previous month, um, but actually at the bottom here, I'm just going to return a month struct of our current month and the count minus start. And so this is for our current month. We're just going to return the month type is current and the day int is going to be our, our count minus the start. And then so if our count is less than our start, meaning it's a previous month one, we're going to calculate our day from days in previous month plus count minus start. So add like the 31 or the 28. And then we're going to add in an else if statement, which is meaning it's the next month. We're going to calculate our day based on count minus start minus days in month and then return our month struct and just giving it our month type is equal to next and the day is the day that we've already calculated. Cool, so now our text can be our month struct day string and for our foreground color, we are going to create a function just calling it text color, which returns a color and it's just gonna return if our month struct type is current, then we're gonna return color black Otherwise, we're going to turn gray. So if it's the next or previous month, we're going to return gray. And then we just need to pass through our month struct type to our text color function. And then finally, we just need to set the frame of our text to be max width and height of infinity so that each cell takes up the same amount of space and is as big as it possibly can be. Cool. So let's build and run this and see if we've got a calendar view. We can see that the previous days, months are grayed out as well as the future days. Yeah, there you have it. There's a very basic Swift UI calendar. Obviously, there's a lot of things you could add, like you could highlight the current day. You could add in events. You could change it so that the Monday is at the start. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed building this Swift UI calendar with me and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.